Hello, gamers. It is Cuddle Punk back once again. Ladies, gentlemen, non binary friends, this one is for a special type of person. This one is for the Rena girlies. This one's for the Rico Nasty girlies. This one's for the Poppy girlies. This one's for the old weird Doja girlies. Ladies, gentlemen, non binary friends, Gold Girl is here. Gold Girl, how you doing today? What's up? I'm feeling great today. So happy to be here with you. So glad to see you. So glad to, for you to be here. Uh, I'm going to get started by asking you, uh, how did you get started in music? Like, what was your first couple of musical experiences? Well, um, I was one of those kids who had the, uh, those, like, those toy microphones. That was, like, the first thing. Like, my, it looked like this slimy, this green slimy thing on top. And it was just a total toy microphone. And my dad actually has a background in radio and was an opera singer. And so I was introduced to music at a very young age. And I was like the family wedding singer slash birthday party singer. Um, I had like, my, my uncle got married and like his singer fell through. So they're like, get Carolyn. Hey, kitty cat. <laughs> hey, but like, sorry, everybody. You get to all see why it's enormous ass while I'm trying to hear fun <laughs> things about my guest. Hey, <laughs> You little bastard. Keep but going. Yeah, I've been sorry. singing since I was a kid. And um, that was like my, I, I remember when I was nine years old, I sang the national anthem for an army Navy basketball game. And that was like my biggest gig as a kid. But yeah. <laughs> you pull from so many different influences across your catalog that you have out so far. What, who are the biggest influences that you see yourself pulling from and uh, who introduced you to them? Well, right now, one of my biggest influences is Alexis Brown from Straight Line Stitch. Um, she was like one of the first uh, Black vocalists, Black female vocalists I heard that really could do those clean, soft vocals and then just like have this amazing roar and growl and um, definitely felt like, oh, okay, I'm like part of a larger tradition that I didn't even know about before. Um, and yeah, she, but like prior to that, prior to like, being more introduced to rock music. I was a big jazz head. So listen to like Dinah Washington, Billie Holiday, those sort of like great jazz voices. Um, that's what I grew up with. You easily have like the most sophisticated musical palette out of anybody that I've interviewed so far. It's all a bunch of punks over here. So it's nice to get some culture for once. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my dad is a big influence on me. Like he's like, so my parents, are, are I'm, I'm a mixed baby so this is my half of black history month <laughs> I've been my Instagram. i have no way to possibly comment on that um but yeah my mom's from panama and so like from her side i was thinking salsa merengue bachata um aventura um just like a lot of great like gloria estefan and like yeah. all of those like sort of latin influences and then my dad was like doing like probably fun and like a lot of jazz and blues so I was just sort of getting it from both sides for sure that's awesome um I saw you open for uh Cat in the Hurricane back in August I want to say at Golden Dagger with the amount of different genres that you go into do you ever does your genre fusion ever make it difficult for you to get placed on bills because I can imagine that there are people out there small-minded people who don't think that what you do can fit on a rock bill right so a lot of times I'm like booking my own bills it'd be great if someone was booking for me so I have like sort of the freedom to be, be like I can do this or I'll bring my band for this or oh this is a performance art gig I'll be doing that um I haven't really met that much resistance but I also have like never had an agent or someone like trying to place me in different places um, so, so yeah, I just sort of, a lot of times when I'm booking myself, I know what I'm being booked for. So I have a general idea of like, oh, like my pop music will work for this or my rock music will work for this or, um, yeah, I, I usually have a pretty good idea of what I'm getting into. That's one of the like really cool freedoms that comes from sticking mostly completely DIY is just, yeah. you really do have a certain amount of freedom of what you ever you want to play. Mm -hmm. yeah but I, I am actually looking into like working with an agency now and sort of branching out in that way um I'm not against it I just uh I didn't know how to do it 
And then I'm, <laughs> but I found out how like found out a few agencies and now I'm like, okay, I, I got my headshot. That was like a big thing. It's like getting my headshot and like, you know, learning a monologue and all that kind of stuff, which I hadn't really been into before, but I see the value of like having a team behind you. Yeah. So I've been doing it <laughs> on my own for a pretty long time. Definitely. I've been listening to your stuff basically since that gig that I saw uh, with Cat in the Hurricane. Ass Out Cash Out is by ob- is obviously just like a monster banger. Um, yeah. I was wondering I was wondering who was it? Was it you or was it or Box who's also on that song who decided to put that Nas interpolation on the hook? Um that okay, I what okay, I've heard the term interpolation but I'm not exactly sure Basically, it's like, um, ba- like taking. Oh, I rule the world. Yeah, right, that right, part right, of it. Right. Okay, like, it's yeah, not quite a sample, but it's be... just using that part of the song. Yeah. Now. Okay. So, like, how, the way that it started was, um, we found originally we wrote the song to, um, a London Bridge by Fergie. Like, we just used that <laughs> instrumental, um, and. Yeah, we just, I don't know, it sort of came up, I like that part, the I Rule the World, that was definitely like bringing me to it. Um, but the rest of it was just us peeking on the phone, talking shit. <laughs> and like, I mean, both of us are just like independent artists. So we just brought whatever we felt like doing. Um, Orb, did, Orb was actually, okay, so I want to say this too. Orb died like before we could shoot the video. Oh shit! I didn't but he's know that. not in the video. The person singing his verse is actually his his best friend. Wow. And yeah, and they like met in St. Louis, and then when Orb, like both of them ended up moving here. But when Orb moved here, that's like when I met him. Um, and also another dancer who was in the video, like all, like died the following year. So like. Yeah, it's like it's it's almost like that video is like is like a memory is like almost like a box of you know their their souls like and um I just want to put that out there like yeah like me or Barb isn't even in the video <laughs> we had to get his best friend to do it so that he could be there but we had put like by the time that he died it was like we'd already put so much planning into it like the date was set like I couldn't just like stop and i knew he wouldn't have wanted me to stop um but i'm just like letting people know there's there's a lot going the on. song goes so hard i'm sure that they would have been proud of what yeah yeah i yeah i feel that too um yeah my friend and both of them like really close to my or box who was on the track and then my friend drew coleman um he's featured in the music video he's one of the dancers and did the choreography for the video as well um died like this past year and both like young, vibrant souls. And I'm just like happy that I was even able to work with them and, and put this project together. So that's Sorry, awesome. I forgot what your question was, but I had to- <laughs> it's all good. It was about the Nas thing, but I'm glad that you brought up right. the uh I'm glad that you brought up the Fergie thing, actually, because that yeah. kind of goes into one of my next questions. Um, kind of a trend in pop music last year was kind of going back to like the Puff Daddy type of sampling where it's yeah. like just taking like the full song is rapping over it. Like you got a uh, super freaky girl or you got big energy or you got first class that all take these very obvious samples and just put them straight in there. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you were going for on the song and just kind of, what do you think about that style of sampling coming back in general? Yeah. So the person who made the beat from the song, like they, I don't even know what their process was. As far as I know, they didn't use any samples. Um, but uh, um, we were we were trying not to use samples. It's like so hard to put music out when you have a sample in it. And even now with that interpolation sort of like screwed me in terms of getting like sync licensing and stuff. And I didn't even know. <laughs> so a note for you songwriters out there. Um, Robin Thicke has ruined everything and it will continue to fuck over songwriters for the time being yeah yeah um but you know it's a learning process and every time i put out a new song i've learned something new um yeah (laughs) uh but we definitely wanted to go for there was definitely this trend in pop music where things were slowing down definitely um yeah and we wanted this 
big just bombastic song that we could just like uh 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 get into um so that kind of feel and definitely like um i'm really active in the gay community here lgbtqia positive all that yes um i am a ballroom child i dance uh, with the house of meekly old way kid right here Orb was never in the ballroom scene but like we're definitely like (laughs) definitely gay and loving it and fabulous and everything um, so we were just like looking for something that made us feel kind, made us just like in our energy. And um, yeah, the the Fergie, the Fergie song was just like something we could create to, just like a, a foundation, a, a canvas. And then once I found the uh beat by uh Vesta, the name of the artist is Vesta, a non-binary artist on uh, Instagram. Um, it was like it just clicked. It, it just clicked so hard and um and then we just recorded the song here it is in addition to all the music that you've been putting out i saw on your facebook that you've also been doing scream and singing lessons you've been doing it through fiverr specifically yeah i just i recently started that and because i've been sort of people have been requesting it and i wanted to just put that out there i did a series of scream workshops in like 20 20- maybe 2018, 2019. Um, And uh, just like teaching regular people how to scream, but I definitely want to work with more like singers and vocalists who just want to try like different vocals or want to scream safely. Um, I did a lot of, I I studied the Zen of screaming religiously. (laughs) And that was like my, like my big jumping off point. Um, but the first time I screamed for an audience was actually for a dance piece. And it was one that Drew, that Drew got me involved in. Um, and it was like the first time I screamed, it was part of his piece called Cold World. And it's about a dancer who gets shot in the street and references a memory that Drew went through. And so the moment that dancer gets shot, he wanted me to just scream like bloody murder, like, you know, like Jamie Lee Curtis Halloween type (laughs) screen. It's something like I never done before. And, you know, like if you ask someone to just like scream right now, it's sort of like, oh. (laughs) Um, But when I did it, I was in the cultural center. And if you guys haven't been to the cultural center, the acoustics there are crazy, like, when I screamed, I could like, I heard it back at me and I, I heard it like bouncing off the walls and the whole room just like, <gasps> just like gas. And I was just like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's cool. And then a week later, I'm doing background vocals for this funk band called Baby Brother and with um, Tim Lee. And uh, the guitarist for that band, Scott Salzinger, Salzinger wanted to do a punk song and wanted me to scream on it. And like part of that, yeah, like never done punk vocals, never done metal vocals, like had some familiarity with it, you know, listening to like Linkin Park, System of Down. My friend put me on to like Devil Wears Prada. And, um, but yeah, <laughs> but I had never like actually done those kind of vocals. Like I was purely just like a jazz singer, did some, uh, background vocals for like R&B and I was really trying to be a house singer when I moved here um, and that's what I was pursuing but once I heard myself like scream in the cultural center and then we recorded this track uh Punky Brewster I was just like oh okay this like feels good like I like being able to do this and um so so how I got involved with I don't know if you are uh, familiar with my band Azili but that was like my first metal band that I was in. And it actually started through a connection. Um, her name is TGD. And me and her sang backup for a soul artist here called TJ Brown. This in like, we used to have rehearsals in South Shore. So I think I was staying downtown at the time. So I would go out there to South Shore, rehearse with them and then ride back with TG. And then like, I don't know what happened, but I didn't see her for like five years. <laughs> <laughs> and then next time I see her, I'm performing this punk song for Baby Brother. And she saw me screaming on that song. And she's like, hey, do you want to try out for my band? Um, it's a metal band. And they're at the time, it was called Severed Tether. 
And, um, you know, I was like, sure, I'll, I'll try out for <laughs> metal band. Why not? And like went in, they hated me, except for the guitarist. He worked with me. And then we like blossomed into this like four, uh, four or five piece or sometimes five piece metal band. Um, and that's where I really like started to flourish and like get into screaming more and learning how to scream properly and screaming at shows and, and those kind of things. I got to end up getting that Melissa Cross DVD at some point. She, I know I, I want to start screaming, but I know that if I don't do it the way that she tells me and told you to do it, that I'm going to screw my voice over forever. Well, a lot of it too is our vocal exercises you would learn. Like I, when I grew up, I was doing, I always signed up for choir classes or like a music class or something like that. I was an acapella so- nerd. Yeah. So, yeah. So like a lot of those exercises are the same. Like it's still like breathing from your diaphragm, opening your mouth, letting the air out, relaxing the jaw. Like those are all sort of like basic vocal technique. And then I think the rest of it is just doing it, you know, and it's sort of like, like playing Fortnite or (laughs) something Mm -hmm. like that. You heard it like, first from Gold Girl. Screaming yeah. is like playing Fortnite. That's the clip for TikTok, it. baby. Yes. <laughs> but but yeah, it's just sort of like, I think a lot of it is sort of getting over. And when you get that, it's like everything here just like shuts down and tightens up and blah, 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 blah. And you have to really just be open and let it all out. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I want to finish off here by asking you, you have your own event coming up in June. You've got Gold Girl Fest coming up. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so, okay, Gold Girl Fest is me bringing together all the different people I've met through my many, many walks of life. Um, So aside from singing, I'm I'm a hip hop dancer, I'm a beat girl, like great, like fully break dancing, going to like street battles and, and all that stuff. Um, so there was a time when I was a street performer, um, I was a living statue and one of like the people I perform with, he does stand up comedy now. So I'm bringing him in as like an MC. Um, the other dancer in ass out cash out, he's a ballet dancer with the lyric opera. Now I'm bringing him in to do, um, I have an acapella piece that I made and he's going to be dancing to that and, um, have like a piano player, Sharon Udo, who's going to be performing live like as part of that piece. Um, I my current band, Electric Mothership, we do like psych rock. They're gonna be coming in. And then some of the people I've done like more like hip hop pop tracks with, they'll either be tuning in virtually or I'll do like a projection of them uh, being involved. Shout out to Kid Mental in Philadelphia and Senpai Girl in Kansas. And um, so I'm just bringing all these acts together under one roof for a full length show. Sure. Yes. <laughs> Gold Girl bringing the culture to Chicago the way that we all needed. Gold Girl, thank you so much for joining us here. Where can we find you? Where can we find you? You can find me everywhere. Um, I'm on, you know, Instagram, Facebook. Um, my music's everywhere, you know, like Spotify, wherever you get your music, iTunes, you can you can find me under the name Gold Girl, G-R-R-L. And yeah, it's been a pleasure talking with you. It's been great talking to you. You can find more of my stuff right here in the link below. You can also find more of Gold Girl stuff right here in the link below. Also, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below who you want me to interview next. Thank you so much, Gold Girl. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you all next time. Thank you so much once again. Peace.